Good morning and happy Sunday. Today I thought it'd be fun to film what a stream day in my life looks like, like get ready for stream with me on a day that I don't work because typically my work days is like, I go to work, I come home, I nap, and then I start. But, I mean, we're still gonna do that. My hair, I literally just woke up. It's just about one. Typically on a day where I do not work and I stream, I sleep till one or two and I don't leave the house. But my mom came and was like, do you wanna go for lunch? I'm like, I kinda do wanna go where you wanna go for lunch. So, and then we have to go to the store. So I might be a little bit stressed later because I kinda start getting ready at four, but we will see. I'm gonna go now, get some food, and then see where the day takes me, and then we'll come back and we will get ready for stream. I do have a big list for today. Don't think it's gonna get done. I was gonna shower, but because I'm going out, I probably won't have time. Okay, I am home from lunch and our trip to the store, and first thing I need to do is change, because one, we know my room is really hot, and two, my mom smokes her van, and I'm really allergic to smoke, and now my clothes smell like smoke, so. There we go. Feeling much better. Um, I also need to turn this fan, but I turned it off because it's very loud. <laughs> Anyways, um, it is three o'clock right now. Do I have enough time that I probably could shower? Yes, but I think I don't feel like that gross, so I think I'm just gonna, because I get showered like Thursday night, I think I'm just going to get my hair wet <laughs> so I can do something with it, and I think I'm gonna start to get ready for stream now which is a little bit early um but that's okay oh but i bought something which is like <laughs> unnecessary but cute so i'm gonna show you i want to learn how to crochet like cute little tiny stuffies but i haven't figured that out yet so i found this like little thing with 18 food plushies to to stitch you got like eggs and bacon and like isn't that so adorable i am here for it it was also on sale which is awesome i have you can you can kind of see it over here, but I got a little miniature set, like a little like cabiny thing to build. But as it turns out, you need glue. <laughs> it didn't come with glue, so I need to get glue. Um, but that's besides the point. I'm gonna put this somewhere, <laughs> and we're gonna start to do the important things that I have to do before stream. Okay, so this is kind of step one, but kind of like not really a necessary step, but. It's picking out something to listen to. I'm listening to my audiobook. Um, what is it called? Let me check. It is called A Court This Cruel and Lovely by Stasia Stark. Now here's the thing. Um, I think I might have talked about this in the last vlog. I mentioned that people were like hung up on the narrators. My issue with the narrators is that one narrator just sounds like a a teenager and the other narrator is like some dramatic period piece actor and it doesn't really work because like it's extremely jarring to go from teenager to that but besides the point I'm gonna start this and I'm gonna make my bed because even if your room is not clean you want to make it have the illusion of being clean Alrighty, I have some postcards that I do need to send at some point today, but I just need to stamp like one or two of them and then they can go in the post office box. That's the one nice thing about like the community um, mailboxes is they all have mailboxes on them. So it is 10 after 3. Normally at this point I wouldn't be getting ready, I'd be working on stuff, but because I'm going to film it, I figure it might take a little bit longer. So. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna show you all the products that I use to get ready for stream. <laughs> also, I'm melting. It's like 23 degrees in here and it's just gonna get hotter because I just turned on my computer. <laughs>
Alrighty, well, I decided that the best way to do this was probably to um, record here because I can see better. Because I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do to get um, my camera positioned somewhere. And I was like, I have a camera right there. Okay, so first thing I do, take out my nose ring because we don't want to get stuff all over that. And I put on chapstick <laughs> because I'm a mess and I get stuff all over my lip and I find it's easier to uh to get off if i am um, if i do that <laughs> okay so i have like i have like i wouldn't say it's like a super robust pro program plan what i do routine um but i start with the shape tape color corrector in this green color maybe there you can see better yeah um and i go over like the, the like the red spots where i've had like blemishes because it color corrects red <laughs> I really and truly am not listening to anything. So I don't need those on. Is this thing nasty and should I clean it? Yeah. I cleaned it more recently than I normally would though, so like there's that. Then next, I mean I've been using like two different things lately. One of them is this L'Oreal Prime Lab um dullness reducer with 4% niamiseed. I use this occasionally and then I also have the Tarte um, shape tape corrector in, I think it's in peach, yeah. This one was actually just in green <laughs> because I'm like, I'm gonna just add a little bit of this first and then we're gonna go with the shape tape. <laughs> Love shape tape, by the way. Not used to doing that with this hair. And like any spots where I have like um like blemishes, I'll put it through there too. So like anything that I just did over with the green, especially if it's like older, I'll uh, go on top with this. And then it adds like a weird orange base, but it works. This I stopped using this as much because it's a little bit more pronounced than the other one but I still like what it does and because of the niamiseed it allegedly corrects over time stylish I know and now I go with this here and usually like through here I'm not an expert but you know it works And then I just try to like use this opportunity to even out the weird orange that I've put on my face. <laughs> Next up, so I used to use the Maybelline Dream BB Fresh a lot in this one's in 120 medium sheer tint, which is a little dark for me, but it's it's like sheer, so it doesn't really make a difference. But I found that because I've been breaking out a little bit more lately, it didn't give me enough coverage. So I start doing this wet and wild photo focus in buff beige which is a light medium um and i really like how it covers it's got a weird applicator it's like a scraper so i just like put it on and then i use a brush after i just coat my face with it <laughs> professional it's got a weird smell to it and i don't know if that's just because um it's old <laughs> Or if it's because it just has a weird smell. I can't remember. And then I have this like fun paddle brush that I love. I have washed it recently, but it just holds, it holds product. And then as always, be a pull down to avoid a demarcation line. Because you don't want your face to be a different color than your neck. That's just weird. And I also like to try to go up in the head headline, the hairline. And then this really helps cover any of the like orange that is maybe not even okay so once that's done we go in with yet more shape tape <laughs> um this is fair neutral 16n for me i find it works i also have like um a 
12 pen that I use. Like, if it's really bad, I'll put it on before I put my foundation on. Um, but this is just... Your girl not getting enough sleep. We know this, so... This isn't an effort to make it look less noticeable. It also kind of works as, like, um, an eyeshadow base, kind of. <laughs> if I'm doing pigmented colors, I usually put, like, an eyeshadow base on when I remember. I usually just stain my lids for random colors. That's a lot. And then we go here. There's no method to the madness, but it works. And then here. And then again over those blemishes that we had. And like, I look big pale, but don't worry. Because I know you're so worried. Uh, we have bronzer for that. <laughs> Oftentimes, too, I'll, like, do, like, right here in, like, the reverse contour that's about to happen. Except I'm kind of putting it right where my contour goes right now. The nice thing is, too, is, like, remind, keep in mind, like, we have the headphones on. So that covers a lot. Next, I use this wet and wild bare focus clarifying mineral powder which has seen better days it is starting to fall apart um to set everything and i just have this like flat powder brush from Oda pro i don't know it's like five bucks it's, it's falling apart it's falling apart and i just do it all over and honestly like i think between this and the foundation like it's doing good things and then I try not to, and it's not always successful. God, there's a mess. I try not to do any more liquidy things after I set it. Sometimes I'll be like, oh my god, what's happening there? And I have to, but... Then we have the yeah, Pure Minerals Butter Bronze in 6676. Um, it's seen better days. I need to replace it. And then I have, oh, it's a Stila Detente brush, it looks like. I think I've had this for ages. I love it. And then I always warm the outside of my face. And down here, shadows. Because remember, like, I'm not just doing, like, my day-to-day -day makeup. I'm doing my stream makeup, so... It is probably a little bit more than I would for- it, it definitely is a little bit more than I would do for day-to-day. -day. <laughs> like, I would not- for me, for day-to-day, -day, I wouldn't be using this. Um, and I wouldn't be using this with bronzer. And then I also do my nose a little bit, just to warm up the center of my face. And I will contour my face a little bit. But, I got this. It's an elf. I want to say it's like a chiseled brush. I don't know. I'm going to take the bronzer. Really. But in here. I always have a hard time with the right side of my face. It never looks as good as the left side. And I don't understand why. It doesn't matter if I do it first or if I do it second. It always looks weird. And remember. My headphones will cover a lot. <laughs> love a good headphone i oftentimes do my makeup with my headphones on and then just like move them but they are a bit cumbersome and if i can do without i do without them see like this one and i do think it's the lighting too looks a lot it could be the lighting maybe i've just been fighting the lighting this whole time and i've been doing okay All right, better. <laughs> and then I have this tiny little brush. It's a Luxie brush. Oh, 141 mini round. And I just try to like a little bit. 
I'm not great at it. I used to be better. And then I stopped doing it, I got worse. Contour dish. I have a big nose, it's hard. Um, and then I have this tart. It's like a blush clutch. Um, this can actually come out, so you can actually use it as an actual clutch. I never use it out. And I use Flamingo and Passport uh, mixed together. Because separately they don't work for me, but together they're good. And then Cool Float is way too much for me. I'm a pale girl, so... And I also do my nose. And here's my trick. If I ever feel like I've done too much, I just take my powder brush that I set everything with and I just go over top. But I think it's okay. Well, it's like an eraser. Next, before I go to my eyes, I do my eyebrows. And now, I like a thick eyebrow, okay? So, it's, it's gonna get bigger. For sure. My like three go-to products are the Tarte DIY Brow um, in dark brown. It's a felt tip. I'm just let that sit for a second. And then I have Elf Instant Lift Brow Pencil. It's like in the lighterish brown. It's a like a crayon and like a spoolie. And then. I set it all with the e.l.f. Clear Brow and Lash Mascara, which I only use for my brows. But, anyways, we're gonna get a dry. I'm not gonna talk while I do this because um, I, I struggle enough. Uh, but we're about to bring the eyebrows in a bit more because they're a little bit separated and really darken them up. The main reason I darken them up is because my hair is dark. Um, and so I like that it matches a little better. And I like, I just like the eyebrow. Once I get the basic shape, which yes, I'm aware looks a little crazy right now, I brush through it to soften the color up a bit. And I reshape it a little bit. Add some dementia with this. Okay. It's good enough. Again, I'm not a perfectionist. As long as my eyebrows don't look crazy, they're good enough by me. And once I add the eyeshadow, it's gonna bring it together way more. Should be good. But we can always touch it up later if it's not quite what we're looking for. All right. And now. It is time for eyeshadow. I have the Adeline Morin Tarte. Can you tell I was heavily influenced by Tarte at one point? Um, but there's a lot of things I really like. Like, honestly, love the brow stuff. Love the shape tape. Love the corrector. Love this palette. To the point that I bought another one because it's not looking great. It's not looking great. We've hit pan on all of the, almost all the main ones I use can tell these two I don't really use and this one I use the least um, and I don't use this blush because it's too pigmented for me um, but I have another one of these for when it's actually not okay and red flight or red eye flight is almost gone and I love this promise ring highlighter I love it anyways I just have a random assortment of brushes I have a Lexi 120 detail round blender probably not using this for the right things this is just for like all over shadow and in my brain I'm like it makes it easier to blend it afterwards does it I don't know I also use this as a eraser like I use my powder brush just in case something goes terribly wrong that's what he does you can always fix it you can always blend it and then I have this Burma 202 brush I got it in like an ipsy bag forever ago I loved Ipsy bags, but it's just like, they were just, it's too much. It's too much product. 
too fast. I can never use it all. And this is mostly just on my lid and a little bit into the crease. And it's really like a superfluous step because you can't really see this afterwards. But I like it. I don't know. I do like seven. One. I do seven colors on my shadow on my lids. Do I need that many? Probably not. Next, I have this detailed taper blender 140 from Lexi as well. I got I got like two sets of these at um Marshall's Winners, one of the two. And they go into contour. The first one I did was at Adel Angels and then Mama Morin. And now we're going into contour to do my crease. Now it's not quite perfect, so we bring back, we come back in with this brush and Adel Angels um, to just kind of blend it and make it so it's not like crazy soften it I guess next I have another Luxie brush 120 which is mini tapered ah. <laughs> I can't, I'm not a beauty here this is what it looks like and I go into girls sporting girls which is this yellow color here and so I do this one first and then I go on top with Bob attraction at the end which is this gold one here because I think it gives it more vibrance who knows if it actually does but I do it I do lower lash line and I do the lid because I think it makes it look more interesting uh, especially for stream because it's like it's like show makeup right it's always a little bit more enhanced than normal and I usually bring it like a third to halfway across so it blends well with my oh it's Luxie too <laughs> 239 precision shader but well, you can see what this one looks like um, and I come in with Boss Lady, which is this orange color. This one's bigger. Um, and I do middle of the lid and middle of the lower lash line. Although I do kind of go out to the edge. But we go over it later, so it doesn't count. So look at that difference. It's a good color. I do focus on blending the yellow and the orange together well, even though I do go over with the gold after. The next I have, I know this is a Quo brush. It looks like that. I can't read it. It's a very old brush. Actually, you know what? Do I have another one? I might have one that's not as bad. Crease brush, maybe? No, I don't. <laughs> this is where I come in with the red eye flight, which is like literally there's only color around the corners of the pan. I'm gonna have to open my new one soon, but I'm like, I'm sad because I can't get this anymore, so like, I'm trying to use this one till it's dead. Although it's probably well expired. It's 100% expired. And I go on, um, just the very edge here and in a little bit and wrap around. Really packing it into that crease. See, it's like, it's very similar. So it's like a really, just like a subtle transition. I will say like this Adeline Morn tart collab, bright colors, they go so well together. That's why I've been using it since I got since like I got it and um that's why I have another one <laughs> I 
I try to even it up. It never seems to work, but I try. One is always bigger than the other. You gotta be careful so you don't do like the whole like eyeliner thing. Okay, good enough. Next we come back in with the Lexi Mini Tapered Brush that we did Girl Sporting Girl with and we go into Law of Attraction which is like this fun sparkly yellowy almost gold but not quite. But I just go over where I did the yellow earlier and we blend it back into the orange. And then oftentimes here I'll come back in with the orange and just kind of keep blending until it gets to be what I want it to look like. The main thing I'm trying to avoid here is what we've got a bit here, which is like almost being like a solid line. enough next i have this glamour dolls brush that i got in another ipsy pack i love it it makes me sad because it falls apart and i just try to stick it back together probably shouldn't pull it apart um and i go in with promise ring which is a highlighter and i do cheeks here like um brow bone here and then i'd also do inner corner Isn't that cute, right, right? Again, just try to make it even. We are done with our like 10 step eye thing. This is usually about the time I remember to put my nose ring back in. <laughs> there we go. Now it's eyeliner. And I've been using I've been using this Maybelline Epic Incliner. It's like um it's like a I don't know, like a liquid liner. Um I was using the Tarte Man Eater for the longest time and I really like it. The only problem is is the brush on mine currently is like really soft and so the precision is a little bit more difficult. I need to get a new one, but anyways. And I know I'm gonna do it wrong because I pull. <laughs> but I'm not an expert at just like freehanding it. that's one done um i've had a lot of practice at this which is why i'm decent at it um if you suck at using these the l'oreal i think it's infallible ink pot i don't know if they still have but it's like a little pot with a brush foolproof that's how i learned to get decent at cat eyes like you get now the question is can we make these look halfway similar I can never quite that actually honestly they're pretty okay i can never quite get the angle the same i try my best and then i also try to make the line over my eye look the best closest and i also try to bring it really close to my lash line so that there isn't a um there's a gap They're actually pretty good. And then I've got some sort of Danielle curling iron. So I curl my eyelashes first. I kind of like have a crop selection for mascara right now. 
I've been using the Tarte Sugar Rush Lash Smoothie. It's technically Sugar Rush, but it's a Tarte brand. I got some here. I'm just gonna wait till it dries a bit before I try to get rid of it. Otherwise, they'll smudge. Then I go with a spoolie to separate my lashes. And then sometimes I add a second coat. Usually, if I add a second coat, I add it with a different mascara, which I'm gonna do because I have this CoverGirl Lash Blast. I need to get new mascaras in very black. Can't tell if it's dirty or if I'm just going blind. Probably both. I also always like go that way versus straight up. I don't know if it makes a difference. I learned a lot of what I learned about makeup from Tati, by the way, if anybody wants to do better than me. That's mostly gone, but just, it's not noticeable enough for me to worry about it. That's my face done, but normally I wait to my lips until just before stream, but I'll do it now. I've been using these CoverGirl um, Outlast lip stains. I really quite like them. So the trick that I found, I have Atomic Love and Jazzberry. The trick I found is you put it on, you let it sit for a while, and then you take it off, and it lasts forever. It's amazing. And they're like, they're like felts, which is great for control. I forgot I had chapstick on, I didn't wipe off. And like, foundation. One thing I've discovered is how my lip is not the same size, it's, it's not the same shape as that one, so I just overline this side a bit. Get, a, get as close as we can to symmetry. And there we go. Like I said, I will take the stain off in like 20 minutes or something. I'll probably reapply before stream. But. That's how I do my stream makeup. Um, and now I get to put all this away. <laughs> Alrighty, so I've taken off the lip stuff. And it's a nice, like, subtle color. Um, so, it's 4.07 now. Normally I start doing my makeup at 4.30. But there are other things <laughs> that I do to get ready for stream. And one of the things I need to do today is kind of a weird day because it's Sunday and because I stream Mondays, so I'll have to do my Mike Boomfrog um, poll in the chat. So I'm gonna do that now. Alrighty, so it is 22 6. Normally, I would have been eating dinner by this point or done eating dinner, but I have leftovers, so I just need to reheat them in the microwave. I should have started this like 10 minutes ago, but I was trying to dry my hair. I got out this and my diffuser because I know it's it's trying, it's trying so hard, but we are not a professional at it. Oh, uh, Wesley's mom says she'll help me when I move down there because I don't know if I mentioned it, but she's um, she's trained in cosmetology, so like or like hair at least um so yeah it's trying and i'm trying and we're not getting anywhere together but anyways so normally i would already be finished eating but i'm gonna go down and eat now and then i'll come up i usually lay down for a couple minutes and then by 6 30 at the absolute latest i start to get ready for my seven o'clock stream and by ready i mean getting my socials ready getting up there getting everything turned on i usually try to get lumia on a little bit earlier than that because the this light 
just takes forever to connect. It usually does, but then sometimes it does things and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I think maybe I just get a new light or reach out to Hugh again because they were helpful before. Anyways, um, gotta go eat. Alrighty, my room is actually quite chilly, so I get to wear my In My Emotional Era <laughs> sweater. I love it so much. The pink is not great with my skin tone, um, but I wanted a pink one, so I bought the pink, or I got, yeah, I bought myself a pink one. Um, I'm currently, I just went to my Google Drive and I pulled out a clip and I'm gonna get it set up for TikTok and Instagram Reels. I have my tweet ready to go. I have my stream thing pulled up here. It's ready to go. I have this vibe in here. Um, and Lumia worked, that light turned on. I have Gatorade. I need to fill my water. And then I'll grab myself a Coke and we're pretty much ready to go. It is 6.34. I'm listening to an audiobook. Oh, I redid my lips. I need to take off the stain uh, here in a couple. I'll probably do that after I get the my socials ready to go. And yeah, we're like, we're in pretty good shape. I don't know, I don't know what else, but this is what I do, and then we just vibe. Oh, I'll also switch, because I played on these Joy-Cons for like, um, seven-ish hours, so I'm gonna switch out for the ones that I have charging on my Switch, and that's what I always do. I always switch them. <laughs> Believe me. Alrighty, so it is 11 minutes to. I have this fun little switcher back here, which makes life easier. Wait for it. Switch. <laughs> it's like, honestly, greatest thing that I have for capture card. Like if you are a content creator or streamer and you have a Switch, get a Switcher or like any capture card for like PlayStation, Xbox, whatever, get, get a Switcher because that way, if you need to switch back and forth quickly, you can, because other than that, like, the option is unplug and replug in. Nah, we're not here for that. Um, so, lifesaver, a thousand percent. But it is about 10 to, so I'm about to start my music in my brain, and then in five minutes, I go live, and then five minutes after that, I put my face on the camera. I do, like, five-ish minutes of, like, just giving people time time to get there. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. Um, it's chilly in my room, which is noise. Um, because then I can wear this sweater. I'm actually freezing though, um, so I hopefully will warm up soon. I also need to check what frog. It looks like it's gonna be, is that it's moss? <laughs> You'd think I would know by now, it's moss. Okay, moss is a toppin the mic boom tonight. Um, and I'll see you guys after stream. <laughs> Alrighty, and now we are post stream. It is like 20 after two, I finished stream around one-ish. I talked to Wesley for a bit and then I just laid down on my bed for a while, which I shouldn't have done. I should have been taking off my makeup, but that's okay. And usually it's so like my post, my post post stream stuff <laughs> is typically like changing into my pajamas, um, taking off my makeup, exporting my VOD so it can go up like tomorrow or the next day. Um, but yeah, it was a great stream. I had so much fun with Mario Kart. So many new uh, people who have never met before came in and they joined and um, it was chaotic, um, but good, but good. I really enjoyed it. I think we'll do more Mario Kart more regularly. And I like that it wasn't like organized and planned because all the other Mario Kart nights I've done have been like, okay, um, whatchamacallit, like let's get these streamers together, let's jump into voice chat. And it's just, it's a lot. So this was nice because it was just like, here's my friend code, here's the room code hop on in, whatever, it's all good. So that was nice. But yeah, I'm gonna take off my makeup now. I'm gonna have a snack, um, export my VOD, and then it'll be bedtime. <laughs> um, I have to work tomorrow. And I'm also a little sleepy. Alrighty, well I moved all the random stuff off of my bed, which was just like this stack of books. It's like my agenda my notebook that has the demos I plan on playing and like other games I plan on playing. And then the other day I actually did get into some writing. So we had these, um, which is exciting, but it is now time for me to sleep because like it is quarter to three. I'm just gonna finish this chapter. It's a terrible audiobook. Like <laughs> if it was just the female narrator, it'd be better. She doesn't do like a great job with the other voices, but 
it goes from like, I think I mentioned this earlier, I can't remember if I said this on stream or here, but it goes from like a teenage girl-ish, like late teens I would say, voice, to a dramatic theater rendition in the male voice. And it's just, it just, it does, it does not go together, but that's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to sleep now, I'm gonna finish this. We're stuck with it, I think for at least nine and a half more chapters. Thankfully I listen to it on one and a half or 1.2 speeds so it goes faster. But thank you so much for watching. If you did like this get ready for a stream with me let me know and I'll try to figure out other things that I can get ready for that are not stream because I would just get boring if I just got ready for stream because it's like the same thing. Um, <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Good night.